with your gear. Have no fear. Auto expert. Barry Wilson is here. Yes, he is. Oh, I'd see Barry Wilson from Wilson Auto Repair in Garland, and he's probably getting a lot of business now. People coming in and going, oh, we're going to hit the road right now. Is this car going to make it? Yeah, don't wait to the last minute. Yeah. That's not a good thing. You always wonder, people say, how do I check my tires? So we're going to talk about a few things about what to do before you right. leave town. Tires are real key. Uh, if you have a tire, of course, that looks like this, where right. the steel's showing, that's not good. But assuming the tire doesn't look like this, you want to make sure that the tread is thick enough, and they always use the penny trick where you stick Lincoln's head down in there. If you can see any part of his head, the tire's too thin. Right. So get some tires if you need to do that before you get out of town. Always change your fluids, change your oil, mm -hmm. change your transmission fluid if it's time for that. Check your coolant, make sure everything's up to snuff. Now here's the key, what I, this is what I do when my daughters go to college. I call them two or three times during that trip, and I say, how do your gauges look? Right. And most people think, well, if I have fuel, I'm okay. That's the one they're used to looking at, and the speedometer <laughs> to make sure they don't get a ticket, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But this one over here, the temperature gauge is key. If it gets past the normal while you're driving, that means you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you'll stop early, it'll avoid standing on the side of the road. Likewise, for the oil and the alternator. If your alternator is in the middle and it's charging properly, everything's going to be okay. I had yep. to rescue my daughter in Ardmore because she didn't pay any attention to her charging uh, and her battery went dead. Uh -huh. Oil pressure is the same thing. That's serious right there. You want right. to make sure it's up to snuff. And sometimes it's just the, the dumb light goes on and says check engine, in which case you want to pull in and yep. have the somebody check But you can go with the check engine light. And the, the key is if it's red, if the light turns up mm -hmm. and it's red, pull over. Yep. If it's orange, you can keep going until you can get it looked at. I there just you learned something new. All right, let's go to your phone calls. Pat in Fort Worth, how can Barry help you today? Plymouth Neon. And I'll be driving down the street, and all my electrical, like my gauges, I'll go out. And then sometimes I'll be stopped, and I'll try to start it. It takes about 40 minutes to get it started. Mm. But the battery looks like it's working. The, the, what it probably is is the ignition switch, which is the electronic part that the key attaches to. A lot of times on the Chryslers, this portion of it, the electronic portion, fails. And when you turn the key, no electricity goes through to the battery, and it also feel, feeds electricity to the gauges. And I've replaced a lot of switches to fix that. So I'd have them look at the ignition switch. Okay, and that would cause the, uh, the gauges to go exactly, out Exactly, well? because that powers everything up when okay. you turn the key on. Okay, perfect. Uh, Gloria in Garland, what's your question for Barry today? Uh, yes, I have a 2001 Ford Focus, and um, it won't crank. Uh, it ran out of gas, and now um, everything is working on it, but it won't crank. Hmm. It's turning over, but it won't crank. When you run out of gas in a car that's fuel-injected, you actually starve the fuel pump for lubrication. It, it lubricates off of the gasoline. So when you run out of gas, a lot of times the fuel pump will seize and lock up, and then your car won't start again. So I'd have someone check to see if you have fuel pressure, and if you have no fuel pressure, likely you're going to have to replace the fuel pump. Ouch. Yes. Okay, Joe and Mesquite, your question for Barry, please. Uh, I have a 2000 Tahoe, and uh, whenever I turn the turn signals on, that reminder stays on after the turn signals have been canceled. Okay, that would be something to do with the body computer. Uh, it would mean probably that the turn signal switch or the multifunction switch is not sending the correct information to the body module, which actually makes all of that come on and blink in the dash. I would have someone use a scanner on that to see if all of those components are working well, but I suspect probably something in the multifunction switch or turn signal switch that's uh, failing on that. All right. Thanks for your phone calls. Thanks for your answers. You can get a hold of Barry at 972-271-3579. Got a website, wilsonauto.com as well. And uh, we'll have a link to that on ours.